Hi, it's Mark from Suffolk Studios, and today we're going to take a look at the new single Once by Liam Gallagher. Now, this track is performed uh, on the record on acoustic guitar, but he has performed it many times in uh, sort of different versions, piano versions, acoustic versions, etc. Uh, and it really shows how good a song it is, the fact that it can be applied in so many different ways. Now we're going to take a look at the full-on single and um, the track itself is performed in the key of F sharp uh, and that would mean that we can play a bar chord down here on fret 2. Um, but what I would prefer to do is uh, show you how you can play this track using a capo. Uh, I think you'll find it a little bit easier and I think it would probably be the way that I would go and perform it live and I think it's probably also the way the guy who played guitar on the single also performed it. Now when we start sticking a capo onto fret 2 um, all the chord shapes just kind of shift up a little bit but it starts to get a bit confusing uh, when it comes to actually explaining how to play the track so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it to you so you can play it in open position without a capo so we're going to play it basically in E and then once you get the gist of all the positions that we'll be moving to you can then stick the capo on uh, fret to and you can shift it into the key that matches the single. Of course the only reason why you might want to do that is because you're playing with Liam Gallagher who can sing the song in F sharp. Now if you can't sing in F sharp then you're going to need to stick that capo wherever you feel is right for your own voice. So here we go in E. Now the chord palette we're going to go through first of all requires us to know how to play a couple of chords that might be a little bit different to your usual set. But let's start at the beginning. So we have an E chord, standard E chord phrasing, first finger G string fret 1, second finger fret 2 of the A, third finger fret 2 of the D string, all six strings. Next chord we're going to need is C sharp minor. Now this is a bar chord, it's a five string bar chord shape and we put our first finger up on the fourth fret across five strings from the A up to the top E string and then the bass E string is muted with the tip of your first finger then your second finger is going to go in on fret five on the B string your third finger on fret uh, six of the D string and your little finger is going to go on fret six of the G string so with five strings ringing but if you are muting up that bass E string then you shouldn't have any droning random notes you don't want so next chord is G sharp minor so we're going to go from this position you're basically going to step over your first finger from the five string bar to a six string bar and then you put the third and fourth back in on the sixth fret but this time on the A and the D strings no need for your second finger at this time nice sad G sharp minor chord Next chord is basically the same shape, but we just shift that down two frets to F sharp minor. Next chord we're going to need to see uh, is uh, E slash G sharp. Now this is a bit of a, a weird one, um, quite a big stretch, and it's what we refer to as an inversion chord. So when you see a chord title that has a forward slash in it, uh, basically what it's asking is the left hand side, so in this case E, is the chord harmony that you're supposed to be playing, but then after the slash you get a single note which you have to perform as the lowest note of that chord. So we're going to play an E chord with G sharp in the bass. Now we're not going to use this E chord and then reach up with your little finger. It's possible to do, but that's not the one we're going to use. We're going to sort of build our E chord shape around like a, a bar chord phrasing of D. So it's this kind of E chord shape, but we're going to adjust it a little fraction and end up with the second finger playing over on the root here. So the full phrasing that we're going to be using here is your second finger is going to be playing the G sharp on fret 4 of the E string. Then the underside of your second finger will be muting the A string. Your first finger is on fret 2 of the D e your third finger is on fret four of the g string and then your little finger is going to go in there on fret five so yeah four fret stretch here fret five of the b string then the top e string if you let it ring in this chord it doesn't ruin the chord shape but if you want this chord shape to be sort of caged up so you can 
point, move it to different positions. Then just mute the top E string with either the underside of your first finger or the underside of your pinky. So there we go, that is E slash G sharp. Next chord we need is A. So down here, standard A chord, first finger, fret two of the D string, second finger, fret two of the G, third finger, fret two of the B string. Make sure everything stands up nice and tall and you get a five string chord. You can bring your thumb over the top to keep that E string quiet. And the final chord we need is a B chord. So B is up here. It's effectively a caged version of that A chord. So first finger is gonna go across the second fret, five strings, once again, muting the E string with the tip of your first finger, and then your second, third, and fourth go in. Second finger is on fret four of the D string, third finger fret four of the G, and little finger fret four of the B string. There's one more chord that kicks in a little bit later in the track, and that is C sharp. And we basically take this B chord and we just shift that up two frets. So you're up at fret four, six, 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 four. Bit of a random one that, it comes in right in the second half of the bridge. So let's start at the beginning, the intro, why not, eh? So we have an E chord that we're gonna kick off with. First finger, like I say, down on fret one of the G string, second finger on fret two of the A, third finger on fret two of the D, all six strings. And we are going to be playing four downstrokes over one bar and uh, all falling on the beat. And we're gonna try and make sure that our strumming hand is gonna be working in 16th. So rather than playing four downstrokes going and stopping, stopping and stopping and stopping I want you to make sure that you're working in 16 so you're going to keep your hand flowing there one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a so there's your intro very simple e chord for four beats now the vocals come in sort of somewhere around beat four you have okay so we want to try and make sure you've got that nice, comfy, strumming groove. You want to make sure, even though you're doing some misses in there, like three misses after every hit, you want to make sure you have those subdivisions because later on in the verse, we're going to start bringing in some of those sub rhythms there. And you want to make sure that you're comfy and you're all locked in with the tempo and the, the sort of rhythm grid, okay? So there we go, that is the intro. Let's go on to the verse. So the verse is a four chord loop, roughly. There's a little bit of a tweak on the second loop right at the end as it goes into the chorus, but um, really it uses a four chord loop of E, C sharp minor up on the fourth fret as a five string minor bar chord. Then we go into G sharp minor, and then we go into F sharp minor. So those are your four chords that you'd be going through. And um, once again, we're gonna be doing four downstrokes over on each beat over one bar per chord. Once again, making sure you're moving in sixteenths. So that would sound something like this. Three, four. C sharp minor. G sharp minor. And into F sharp minor. Now on the track, just at that last chord we just did there, the G sharp minor, there are a few skips that come in around beat four. So it starts to go. So you just have a couple of little uplifts there. So down, 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 up, down, up. Okay, just very, very quick, little just kind of pick me up for the rhythm. All right, then we're back into those four chords again. So here we go, we're in the sort of the second loop, the last chord of the verse, and we're about to go into the chorus. Now, it means that we have to put this very, very quick pushed E slash G sharp in. So you're gonna have this final chord of the F sharp minor. So it's just that final upstroke. One, two, three, four, and. All right, so it's really kind of getting a push. In fact, it's not the final, it's the penultimate upstroke. So you're going on the four E, it's on the four E and uh, you've still got a little bit of time there. So you got one, two, three, and a four E and uh. 
okay so you're getting that nice little uplifting e slash g sharp it's a very quick chord and it has to unfortunately be the hardest shape out of everything so again sometimes it's always good just to practice those changes going between and then eventually you get the push okay so the whole verse is going to go something like this Sharp minor, back to E, into the C sharp minor, G sharp minor, and the F sharp minor, into the uplifting E slash G sharp, into the chorus. So the chorus is really uh, sort of three chords for the best part of it. You have an A going into an E going into a B. So we have... Now for the sort of main first chorus, there isn't really much more than just kind of vocal and guitar and maybe a few sort of electric guitar twiddles going on. Now the structure we've had there, we've had a whole bar of A, so that's four down strokes, still working the sixteenths, and then half a bar of E and half a bar of B. No real uplifts in the uh, sort of uh, strumming patterns yet, but when we start to get the drums in and the second choruses, etc., you can start to bring those in. So I think we get three loops of this uh, pattern. So let's A, into E, and then into B, back to A, into E, into B, back to A, into E, into B. Okay, so we're going to go that last little section. We go into an F sharp minor. So we have two beats on the F sharp minor. And then on the half beat of this or second beat, we go into the E slash G sharp. And then we're into an A, which we ring on beat three, and then we're into E on the one. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that whole chorus, we have an A to an E to a B. We do that around three times. Then we're going into F sharp minor through the E slash G sharp into the A, letting that ring for two beats, and then we back into like, almost like an intro, it's a little kind of break of just one bar of E, okay? That's where the drums then come in to then go you, to take you into verse two. So let's do that full chorus through. Three, four. <laughs> Okay, now the minute the drums kick in, you could start to uplift that kind of strumming pattern through your verse. Same chords as it was in verse one, and the choruses that happen are all the same chords as the chorus we've had there. Um, and you just have a little bit more of a skip in the strumming pattern. So rather than just doing four down strokes, you bring it into. So that strumming pattern is basically down, miss, down, miss, up, up, down, down, miss. So down, miss, down, miss, up, up, down, down, miss. And if you repeat that on each of the sort of four chords of the 
the verse chords, you're going to have the E to the C sharp minor to the G sharp minor to the F sharp minor. You do that round twice and then you have the uplifting E slash G sharp skipped in just at the end. So we get this second verse, three and four. And Uh, two sort of beat chords there so we've had the E you can change that strumming pattern from that down miss down miss up up down down miss which you've used on the A to E, e. the down strokes come like this thing you can do just in the chorus while I think of it is when you're going from the B chord if you want to have a simpler change you can just drag your two three four back to into the A chord rather than switching into a one two three um, it doesn't make much difference some people out there might even be playing your power chord or sort of version of your major chord so using only two fingers um, I don't like that chord shape, I'm going to be honest, because it means that a lot of the time many players are smudging that highest note, which gives you all the sparkle of the chord. So I think it's far better if you play with four fingers through your uh, major chord on your five string shape. So you can drag those two, three, four back or switch them into one, two, three if you wish. So the second chorus with the skipping is three, four. the second chorus it goes into this kind of extended section which is purely just going between E and C sharp minor back and forth and we have then we go to a B so we've had E for a bar C sharp minor for a bar back to E for a bar to C sharp minor for two beats and B for two beats. Let's do it one more time. Three, four. And then it goes into this kind of instrumental, it's like the second half of the bridge. And uh, Liam is kind of going once, and it echoes on once, 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 as it goes through, okay? Now it does a chord sequence of E to C sharp major, not C sharp minor this time, C sharp major. If I have the right teeth in, C sharp major. And the strings have all changed their sort of harmonic response from the E to an F, okay? So we're going to be using E and C sharp major. So it's the same shape as the B, but shifted up to fret four. So we get this. Just one bar that's down, up, up, down, down strumming. You do it through four times. Last time. And now we go back into the chorus, into A. Then B to A to B A and the last time into F sharp minor and the rush. So that's 
exactly the same as any other chorus, but you just get to let it ring on that lovely E chord right at the end. So there we go. I've called all the names as they are in open position, but of course, once you take a capo and you stick it onto fret two, you will match everything that you hear on the single. So. So you just shift everything back up. There we go. I hope you have a lot of fun playing this track. It's a great little tune. Good effort by Liam. So uh, yeah, well done. I've been Mark Saffrock Studios. Hopefully we'll see you again. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll hopefully have some more tutorials going on in the future. Of course, we do one-to-one -one lessons. We have a bit of a merch store. We have a load of tips and tricks guides on our YouTube channel. Loads of little bits. Do have a browse. There should be lots on there to have a look through. Like I say, I'll be Mark Saffrock Studios. See you later. Yeah.